But before I go and show you the code, let me just uh, say a few things and like give you an overview of what how yield works. Uh, before even that, I just wanted to say that people are still doing research in this uh, keyword yield. So if you look at this paper, this was published in 2018, and it is basically um, a very interesting paper on how yield has been used and the the notion of coup routines, which is uh, crucial once you introduce um, the notion of yield. Basically, when you think of call CC, which we talked in a, in a previous video, uh, so calling with continuation, that is a primitive that allows you to do this notion of coroutines. And coroutines is just, um, just think of it as two tasks that can interchange values between each other. It's kind of a mind bender, but it's, um, coroutines are used for quite a few things uh, in terms of implementing either runtimes or programming language runtimes or uh, compilers and also interpreters. So they're used quite a bit if you're interested in programming languages both coroutines and, of course, uh, continuations and CPS as well. Um, right, so the way we're going to use yield is, <clears throat> sorry, basically we're going to have our CPS program as we were, as I was showing you so far. And then we're going to have a primitive now called yield. And what yield will do intuitively is it's going to suspend the rest of the continuation. Okay, so you're gonna have yield in your code. Let me show you an example with yield. Here it is. So in this example, what I'm doing is, this is a CPS computation, as you know, and what we're doing is we're returning one value, which is the last value, right? This is always what we return, and in this case, we're returning a string. But we're also yielding three values. And when we yield three values, you can imagine that there's, this is essentially doing two things. This is returning a string and also a stream that contains exactly three elements. Okay, so it's returning two things. A stream with the yield, stream of three elements, and also a string because you, it's the final result that you return from here. Okay, and this is just a plain old CPS monadic um, computation, right? So how do we run it? We run it with the usual function that just passes um, two functions, one for the return value, one for the error value. And in this file, I'm using run CPS, which is divine, defined above. Um, it's basically the same that I was using before, but it just prints out, just has a different function name. But basically we'll call a CPS computation and it will default and print out to, to the screen whatever you return on the OK and in the error channels or lambdas. So how could we use a yield? Let me just start by doing that. Um, well, if I do this for each construct, which I'm going to go through the implementation, what I'm saying is for each, three, for each element of the yield, call this function. Okay, so this is going to be very similar to what we have in this example, right? Where we have one piece of code that performs the yield, and then you can iterate over the elements that are yielded. Okay, so here we don't really care about the return value, we just care about the yields. So that's exactly what's happening here. This is just a for each that I've implemented as a function, and it is a monadic operation. That's why it's inside the run CPS and what it is doing for each yielded value in these three values, print something. So call this function. So pretty simple. And if I run this, I get got one, got two, got three. I can even comment this out so that it's not confusing you. I get got one, got two, got three. And then finally, notice that the for each statement will return whatever was returned by by the um, this computation. So it's returning whatever I return here is actually returned by for each. Okay, that's basically how we use yield, right? So in short, in summary, to go back, you have your monadic computation, and essentially, 
whenever you do yield, you're kind of storing that somewhere. Another way to think of it. And you can use for each to take it out from that location, right? So for each, we'll iterate over every yield point. We can call this yield points. So it will first get the one and then the two and then the three. And we can see that because we wrote got element, right, just so you can see that this changes. Okay, got element one, got element two and three. So it, it is printing it in order. Okay. So this is, this is the intuition of how to use yield, how to write code that uses yield. Um, so how, what had we, what did we have to change to kind of support the notion of yield? Well, we, we had to implement this for each. And then I'm also going to show you this to list. So let's go back to our slides. So to implement it, we need we have the yield that I'm going to show you how we implemented it. Um, we also have this notion of resume, which is used internally, and also this notion of suspended task, which is also used internally. So now let's look at the code. 